A string is wrapped multiple times around a massive pulley. Pulleys radius R moment of, mer moment of inertia 500. The mass of M is hanging from the string, which causes tension T. Friction is insignificant. In terms of T and R, what is the net torque acting upon the pulley due to the hanging mass? Well, we know the mass is pulling down with Mg and tension is pulling the mass up. Tension is also pulling the pulley down. If they want it in terms of T and R, well, tension is the force, R is the radius. Net torque is equal to force times radius. So I would say the force is T and then the R is radius TR. In terms of T and R, what is the angular acceleration of the pulley? Well, torque over rotational inertia is angular acceleration because we know T is I alpha. So we're going to say T over R divided by 500 is equal to alpha. They told us I was 500. The maximum linear acceleration the hanging mass can have is 9.8. Do you agree? Well, let's say 9.8 is 9.8 and 10, one and the same thing. If we were to cut the rope, let the M, let mg fall, the acceleration would be 10. So we know that the max is 10. Now, is it going to be less than 10? If that pulley has mass, it's less than 10, and this pulley has mass because the rotational inertia is 500. So I'd say the most it can be is 10 or 9.8 or it's going to be something less. In this case, it has to be something less, but it's not going to be greater than 10 unless there's an additional external force pushing it down um, and the net external force being greater than mg in the downward direction. That's the only way to exceed the 10. The pulley in one is replaced by a pulley with greater moment of inertia. How would that affect the angular acceleration of the system and if everything else is held constant? If greater moment of inertia, moment of inertia is a resistance to rotate or sluggishness to rotate, resistance to change angular velocity. So if you make it larger, it's going to reduce Let's see how that affect the angular acceleration of the system. It's going to reduce the angular acceleration of the system. We know that torque over I is alpha. So if we increase the I and torque remains the same, alpha is going to be smaller. It's reduced. A pulley system contains two disks of different radii fastened together and two different masses connected to the pulleys, as shown in the image to the right. If their friction is negligible, there was misspelled it, wasn't it? T-H-E-I-R. Anyway, under what conditions will the pulley system be at equilibrium? Write an equation and explain your answer. Equilibrium means balance forces, doesn't it? In this case, it's forces that cause angular acceleration, so balance torques. So if they have the same torque on each side, if you have the same torque, because the two radiuses, the, the I'm sorry, the two disks, they're fused together. So if you pull on one side, you pull on the other, it's, you're looking at balance torques. So if you have balance torques, then you're not going to have any angular acceleration. So if the net torque is zero, you remain in equilibrium. Equilibrium being balanced torques, constant velocity, no acceleration, all the good things. If we're looking for a formula, I would say that the force from capital M would be capital MG. It's being applied at a radius lowercase r. We want to set that equal to the force on the other side, the torque on the other side, force being lowercase m times g, multiplied by uppercase r, its radius. MGR is equal to MGR, as written in number three. A student is conducting tests with the pulley system used in number three. In one test, the student determines mathematically that there is a net torque acting on the pulley from the two hanging masses. However, the pulley is not moving. Explain how this could be. Well, if you have a net external torque and it's still not turning, there must be something else going on. And I'm going to say that those disks are sitting on an axle of some sort that they're spinning around. And there is static friction there that you're not overcoming. So you're pulling, there's an unbalanced, you know, there's an unbalanced torque, but there's no, there's no rotation. 
that's because you've got another force that's going on that you're not overcoming. And that other force that would be the, um, the, the static friction there from the center that they're not accounting for. So their measurements, when they say it's net external forces, is um, a non-zero value. It's got to be they're not factoring in that, um, that friction. So friction from the pivot is not negligible. It's, it's non-zero. Draw, draw a graph of torque versus angular acceleration for the pulley. So our graph is going to have acceleration on the vertical axis. We'll put torque down at the bottom on the horizontal axis. As torque is increasing initially, angular velocity is not increasing. But once you break free of the static friction, then you're going to see that linear relationship between the two.